welcome to another video from Code Review IO. In this video, we will talk about how to translate or use internationalization in our React Native apps. This is more advanced tutorial on how we can achieve this functionality using async storage and also uh, make sure that the user will be able to switch between the languages so easily. So to get started, we are going to use three packages, but the main package will be, uh, it's actually i18 next. For, for example, if we go to package JSON, uh, the first one will be React Native Async Storage, uh, as we know. Uh, the second one will be i18 next, React i18 next, and React Native Localize. This one is more optional, it's up to you, but it will be handy if we want to detect the current localization in the in the app these are uh, will be shared also in the in the video description down below with all the links to the packages now to get started also we will create a file called uh, i18config.js it's up to you what you call it uh, the first thing is that we try to detect the current uh, localized oh, localization uh, in the app so we will use react native localize to to get the current localize and this will return us uh, the first one that we can be detected, we will take the language code from it, and that will be, uh, for example, English or uh, French. And then we will make some resources uh, con uh, constant, and that's it, basically uh, what are the supported language that you would like to do in your app. So for example, in my app, I would like to do English and Arabic, and here I put some basic translation here. Normally, this translation, it should be a JSON file that you could import so you can make your folder and then you put JSON files there. Now, after that, we will initiate the i18 next. So we will use i18 next and we called in it react i18 next, which is coming from uh, react i18 next. And we will say in it, we will set the debug to true in case of uh, diff environment. And then the others, we will pass just the resources. Uh, it's up to you to pass also the language. Uh, what is the uh, selected or the the initial uh, language? From my, uh, for me, I will use git get language, which is actually getting the lo the first localized language. Otherwise, it will use English. And I will also I also put a lazy as true supported language for this app is English and Arabic. The compatibility JSON it's uh, it's needed here, and then the fallback language it will be also an array. So for me, I uh, specify Arabic as first. Uh, interpolation is also for escaping the values. There are more configuration. Maybe it needs to be checked, but these are the needed one to get started. Now, in the end, we will just export the IIT next. Now, if we go to the index.js, we will just import that file so it will be started initiation of the flow uh, when the app is a start loading. So next, let's try to create also storage surface here. Why? We need to wrap some uh, async storage functionality and we need to wrap it because it makes it more easier for us to have it um, in separate file. So what I would try to do is also create storage surface here file. And that's where I will say uh, create storage surface object. And that will be either the set item here and then we'll get item. So the set item will be a sync, set taking the key value pair. And then we pass also callback and that will handle the error. So in case of the set item is there, we will stringify the value. That means that this value can be anything. And then the stringify will be taking care of this storage surface. Uh, if there is any error, then we handle the error callback and then we send it back in case of the client would like to show some error messages. That will be the same actually for get item. So it will be an async, the same functionality. The only difference is that, is that we will use get item and we will parse the value whatever comes from there. Uh, why is that? Because uh, it could be that we are using an object. So we will always parse the value. And then in the case of error, then we will just send the handle error callback as this. So uh, we will create also a translation context here. We will uh, also make a provider. So the idea is that we need to wrap our uh, all components with this provider when we will have the translation so we can access and use it inside the um, inside or our app. So uh, the first thing is that I will I will create a constant for user language. This will be uh, our storage item a key. 
and then uh, we will create create context uh, i will pass only the current language and also the change language uh, there is no that much here uh, what you can do is also add a uh, direction or uh, uh, dir so this will be handy um, for example uh, especially for arabic because it uses from uh, rotating from uh, left to right or right to left so these are uh, can be handy and then we will create translation provider this will take the children uh, take the react user state and we instantiate i18 next language so we will bring i18 next language uh, i18 next uh, from the package and then we uh, put this as initiate language in that case otherwise we'll pass in arabic as an initiation for this language and then we will make a function where it will take care of the change language so we set the current language in the state we take we go to i18 next and then change the language with, to the selected one and then also we bring the storage surface when we want to set the item to the user language that we have to this language uh, to the selected one so the user every time the user will open the app will be the last uh, selected language that he he has chosen and then we bring the use effect this will be getting the user language where we ask the storage surface to get the user language in the initiation and then we set it to i18 next and then we change uh, we change also the state the user state so this will be uh, this will be a start in the beginning and then it will change the language even if the so if i go to this file even if you are for example you selected or the good language is coming as uh, arabic um, and then here the user language is getting from the uh, storage is in english this will be uh, overrided so we are good here uh, now in the end we just try to uh, call the this function so this will be it to just call this function uh, and then in the end we return the, the translation provider context provider and then we pass the values as current language and change language uh, in the end we also make some hooks uh, so or actually just one hook uh, which is called use locale uh, in that case we will take two functions or two uh, properties from the our context which is actually the change language and current language and then also we will take the t or the translation uh, function from use translation and that's coming from uh, react i18 next so in the end we will have something like this now if we go to for example to our app so i just wrap it here uh, with translation provider and then i have also component i made a component called language switcher so if i go to this language switcher it's just a simple language uh, switcher so first i bring the user locale we have change language we have current language and then the t itself if i want for example to translate anything uh, i can use it like something like this hello world so i will just bring uh, the config here to show you uh, how it was like this so for example the key is hello world so i can uh, use the key as, as like this and then there is another way also that if we want to pass any parameters we can pause this and then it will be translated for example uh, if you see the count we are sending the current count and then it will be uh, translated with a count here so you can define the variable uh, here and then uh, we if we want to change the language we actually just call change language because that will be uh, basically it and it will take care of ch changing the language and also saving in the storage um, for the user choice for the next uh, visit now there is also uh, something i want to show you which is related to what in case for now we are using only use locale which means that we are using hooks inside the component and you uh, hooks cannot be called outside of the component and that will make it a bit difficult for us on how if we want to translate something outside of component um, I, I don't want really to be linked every time to to the component to translate something so in that case i would use some functionality for that so basically uh, what you try to do is actually um, bring make a function called get translation send the key value to it for, for me these parameters is actually uh, an optional so now uh, what we are trying to do first is that we check from i18 next is this one is not initialized then we say like translation is not initialized which is 
kind of like rare uh, because we uh, we reach this uh, point uh, and then the i18 next is already initialized here uh, and then also we also check this is kind of, like, kind of like a fallback for the errors in case of the key is not found we just put something like okay key is not found or missing key for uh, that translation but the, in the end we will uh, return i18 next.t and that will be uh, our translation so for example if you want to use it then we would just say like okay for example i would just say so we can say translate so in that case we can use uh, this translate function outside of the uh, outside of the co any component uh, but if we want to use it inside the component so uh, we can use it always by using uh, locale.t and and that's basically how we can try to to to, to use i18 next uh, outside of the component now I have added also to the context direction, um, which is the LTR or the uh, RTL for the Arabic. So in that way, we are going to send this inside the, the value of the context. So we check the current language and if it is Arabic, then RTL or LTR. And also in the in the context, we are returning the whole values to from this use locale. Now in the language switcher, I also change this to be a language, change language, but then we are getting also the direction and then we send it to style as a direction. This will work uh, perfectly in, uh, um, in both iOS and Android. Uh, you might need sometimes that to have um, some uh, additional styling, especially for Android to handle this. Uh, so maybe you can use flex reverse uh, or row reverse. This can be also uh, will work in case of Android. Now there is one caveat that you need to take care of, which is related to an Android. So for example, in Android, you need to put some uh, language, supported language in your Android manifest. So you go to Android manifest inside the source main, and then you need to add this here. That will tell that uh, support you RTL or not. That is will only if in case of you have an RTL language, which in case in that case it is in Arabic. So you will be uh, setting this to true. Um, there is another one uh, caveat. So it's related to the build gradle where you have the default config. So here you have the default con config under Android. Uh, what you see also the package and all of that, all of that. And what you need to try to do is also to set rest configs. And in that way, uh, you need to have like resources config, which means uh, you need to put uh, the supported language here. Otherwise, uh, Play Store or uh, uh, Google will uh, will block your app uh, for the release if it's supported to languages and it's not mentioned here. So uh, that's one that you need to take take care of. So uh, I think with that we are uh, good for this video. I hope this is useful. Thank you for watching and see you next time.